Yo, 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 welcome, what's good? Or if you prefer, hello, how are you? I hope you're well. It's me, Kit Man and Man, and I'm back again with another video. And uh, this time, we're talking about fakes. Before we get into this big, contentious conversation about fakes and how to spot them, drop a thumbs up for this video, yeah, because I know you like the content, right? Um, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, hit that. Turn on the bell notification so you don't miss when I upload a video. And I would say share this one because um, people need to know how to spot fakes. Um, so yeah, man, share it with your friends, share it with your family, people that may or may not want to buy you some football shirts and um, give them a little insight as to how to spot fakes. I'm sure none of you watching actually want fake shirts in your collection. Being the type of person I am, uh, quite active on social media, I get literally daily asked by several people two main questions um where do i get my football shirts from and how to spot fake football shirts um and general feeling around fake football shirts um so i've decided to do a series of videos starting with this one so this one is how to spot fakes next one will be where do i get my football shirts from and there may or may not be a third one where I talk about the pricing and just the market, the, the football shirt market and how much shirts um, actually cost and how to pick up bargains and that sort of thing. Um, so yeah, stay tuned and at some point it will be linked above your head um, and all of that stuff. I'm not here to actually judge anyone. Everyone has different circumstances and I'm not here to judge. That said, forget about fake shirts. They're not worth the money. Just, just don't do it, right? There are enough shirts. All right, you might not be able to have the shirts that you really, really want, the, the grail shirts, but they are not worth it. A lot of fake shirts, most fake shirts are made in places with really poor human rights for the workers. And I mean, legitimate shirts, the human rights records and stuff of the, the so-called sweatshops um, is not great also, but it's a little bit more regulated than the fake market. And also like organized crime groups and all of these kind of things, like it's ridiculous. And um, the view from the kit room actually done like an amazing um, blog about um, the real cost of fake shirts, which I'll link below after that big old rant about my opinion on fake shirts. These two shirts sitting next to me. The Ajax, I think it's 996 from when they won the Champions League. And Fiorentina shirt um, from 1998. Those are both fakes. Right? I don't count them as a part of my collection. And just haven't given them away yet, to be fair. These were my introduction to buying football shirts. These were the first two non-Arsenal shirts that I bought um, right at the beginning of lockdown and a Facebook ad popped up, blah, 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 retro football shirts, da, 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 da. And being a child of the 90s, I was blown away by the nostalgia of these shirts, especially this one, which has Davids on the back and this one, which has Gabriel Batistuta on the back. And they cost me 45 quid each. Right, and as someone that knew absolutely nothing about how to spot authentic shirts, I didn't know. I just went on this site and I thought to myself, oh, okay, they're old shirts, cool. These must just be like overstock from all of those. I don't know what I was thinking. I just didn't know what I was doing and I bought them and it cost me 45 pounds. And I will talk about websites like where I got this from later on. Um, so with fake shirts, it is an absolute minefield, like huge, huge minefield, how to spot fake shirts. Um, so first and foremost, I'm gonna talk about modern shirts. Modern shirts are slightly easier to determine whether they are legitimate or not, especially from, I suppose, the three market leaders, which would be Nike, Adidas, and Puma. Um, all three of those 
brands have a unique code on their shirts. These are my three highest ranking shirts from my uh, from my ranking list from last season shirts. If you haven't seen it, I'm gonna link it above there. Go watch it. I rank all I think 18 shirts that I bought from the last season just gone. And I rank them from 18 to 1. With Adidas, there's normally a label in the top left corner and the top left shoulder. And it has a series of numbers in it, right? And you basically put that middle code into Google, followed by the word Adidas, like I will be showing you as we go along. And... On your Google search in the images, it should come up with a flood of these shirts. If it comes up with anything other than these shirts, well, not anything other. If the majority of photos that come up are not of this shirt and a load of another shirt, then it's, I would say, 99.9% .9 a fake. With Nike, the label is normally found in the bottom, this middle code here underneath the size, you put it in followed by the word Nike and it should come up with a load of these shirts, same story as the Adidas. And with Puma, very much the same. It's uh, found in the inside wash label. It's normally the code that says style NO, style number, which is there, you put that in followed by Puma. And again, it should come up with majority these shirts. And what tends to happen a lot with fake shirts, I don't actually have any fakes other than these two to hand and these don't have the code. If you put a code for a fake shirt through, it will probably come up with a completely different shirt, normally by the same manufacturer. So, I don't know, I might put this code in for this Adidas shirt and it will come up with a load of, I don't know, Arsenal away shirts for example like I don't know for definite but let's just say that that is um, it will come up with a load of those which is clearly not this shirt which means that they've just found any old serial number and put it on the shirt. Another way of um, spotting fakes especially with Adidas another telltale sign is um, especially if it's brand new with tags right here where it says IXJSY a lot of fake shirts don't have whatever the team is. It just says JSY. So that's normally quite a quick way, a quick and easy way of telling whether an Adidas shirt is fake. If it's brand new with tags, uh, if you're seeing it posted on eBay or Depop or something like that, that's a quick and easy way of just ruling a shirt out without having to go through and put Google codes in. Um, also, the code that's found in the tag um, is normally found on the shirt as on the tag there as well at the top so if the codes don't match up then it's also probably a fake with modern shirts as well with modern night shirts from around the 2002 era they have a pretty clever hologram system so within this there's a hologram and it should have a night tick in it the same goes with Jordan shirts and I'm gonna overlay a video uh, right now. Yo, what's happening people? Just a quick one, if you're not aware, I've got a little trick on how to spot the authenticity on a Nike slash Jordan shirt. Right, so if you have an iPhone, search magnifier. Um, I'm sure Android has something similar. Um, so this shirt is a 0506 Arsenal away shirt and this label is actually on the inside. It's normally the one that has the Nike or whatever on it. Um, it can be quite fiddly. So you have to keep moving it around and um, readjusting the focus, but eventually you will get there. And as you can see, there's a night tick there. Um, good lighting also helps. Um, you can see it there and I'll take a picture now. You can see the night tick and I've just inverted the colors so it's easier to see. Um, also, this one is a PSG Jordan shirt from last season. Uh, this one's located on the front and it's with the same with all of the night shirts. And you can see there's a night tick and the jump man in the picture and I've just inverted so you can see. Another way of spotting fake shirts, um, this would be modern 
or vintage shirts. If on the inside label, there's a biro number, 19, 21, whatever the number is, written in these codes is usually a red flag to suggest that it's probably a fake shirt. It's probably some sort of numbering system that they do in the factories where they manufacture the fakes. Another way of spotting fakes, especially when you're on like a website and uh, people are selling loads. If the seller has an abundance of the same shirt, especially vintage shirts, all brand new with tags, with all sizes, um, all for around the same price or at the same price point. So if they're all 45 pounds or all 35 pounds or all 60 pounds or whatever, and they've got like loads of them in all sizes, chances, not even chances, I would say 99.9% .9 of the time they would be fakes. Unless it's from a reputable retailer um, who has announced that they've got some dead stock or whatever and like it's an official partnership or something like that. But generally speaking, if you go onto a website and they've got a ton of the same shirt in various sizes, all at the same, uh, and all shirts depend um, on that site are around the same price, they're probably fake. Another way of telling whether a shirt's fake or things to look out for, especially when shopping on places like um, Depop and on eBay, is the wording of the advert, right? And this is where it's a huge, huge, huge minefield. <sighs> if someone lists a shirt as a replica, that generally tends to mean that it is a fake shirt. Although, t um, manufacturers like Puma their official term for their shirts is replica, which makes it really, really, really confusing. Because a replica shirt in Puma's eyes is, it's not, an, it's not a match shirt. It's not the same as what the players wear. It's made from slightly cheaper materials um, to be more cost effective and more easier for normal people to go out and buy uh, at 70 pound, which is still quite expensive. But we'll talk about that in the other video, um, rather than £110 for the player spec shirt. So they called it a replica. And I suppose any shirt that isn't a match shirt is a replica shirt. But the majority of the time, when you're buying a shirt from somewhere like eBay or Depop and they're selling it as a replica, that generally tends to mean that it's a fake. Also, things like uh, I'm uncertain of the of the authenticity of the shirt or retro remake means that it's a fake. Um, stuff like that generally tends to mean that it's a fake. Another great way of knowing whether a shirt is legit or not, especially when we're talking about more retro shirts where codes and stuff are were not the commonplace, so it wasn't so easy to determine whether it's a fake or not, um, is doing your research. So what I always do is, if I'm looking for a shirt, like an older shirt, and I'm not too sure what it is, especially if the price looks too good to be true, what I will do is, is I'll search on somewhere like eBay, or Depop, or wherever, or uh, classic football shirts, or somewhere like that, somewhere that has a legitimate version of that shirt, uh, especially if that the price is really high or from a reputable seller, and I will just cross-reference what I'm seeing on the shirt that I'm looking at and possibly purchasing with this shirt, which is more or less guaranteed that it's a legitimate. So we're looking for what the badge looks like, what the sponsor looks like, what the kit manufacturer looks like, where the shirt was made, um, and just little details that you can see if it's like a spot the difference. And I actually had a situation with an Arsenal shirt. I'm gonna overlay some pictures now where um, I actually bought this shirt um, because it was a um, auction. It was running really, really low on time and I just didn't have time to do the research.
to see the differences in the stitching, the lines, um, the badge and stuff like that. And a good thing with buying with eBay is they have a money back guarantee. So if you buy a shirt that is fake, um, they investigate, you speak to the seller or whatever. If the seller doesn't want to refund you, they investigate, they step in and they give you back your money if you're sold a um, shirt that is fake. Right, so in the time that has passed since um, me originally recording a video and me editing it, I've actually gone out and bought myself a legitimate version of this 1997-98 uh, Fiorentina Nintendo home shirt um, so I am actually going to compare the two of them so we can see what we're looking out for so this one here on the right hand side is the legit one we compare the tags they look pretty similar but what you can definitely see straight away is on the fake the the material is different right and they feel physically different this fake one feels really thin and cheap and this one feels like a proper shirt so have a look at the badges um this one actually kind of looks better than this one but <laughs> The badges are different so this is like a fan version or whatever so the nintendo is screen printed into the shirt whereas this one they've just stuck some felt material one on it and um we've got the fiorentina badge see look you can see this is so much better quality than this this looks like it was just thrown together in a few seconds um oh and um yeah the feeler is heat pressed on whereas on this one it's stitched which and even the um the logo on the sleeves are stitched on and this one's a screen printed and it's it's kind of strange because what i've learned is that a lot of the italian teams um, like the fan version stuff a lot of it seems to be kind of screen printed or whatever and then when you get like player spec ones they're more expensive they actually stitch the logos and stuff on the tag on the inside we've got the feeler one with the, the metal strap and that's all you get on the fake one so inside out you can clearly see the difference in the quality this is the fake one and this is the legit one um yeah yeah and as you can see this is um made from like a vinyl this uh name set and this one on the original one is made from flocking like a felt material all right so yeah, and I don't know if you can tell, but the colors are slightly different. I'm just gonna look at the badges together. So but yeah, here I am, happy as Larry, in um, an original version of my absolute grill shirt. Um, yeah, man, so pleased with it. Um, so yeah, back to the original video to pass Kit Man a Man. So uh, yeah. With retro shirts i would say the best way of knowing whether a shirt is fake or not is just speaking to the community right whether that's on twitter facebook so if i've come across a shirt or i've bought a shirt i'll go onto twitter i'll take a picture of the uh, the shirt take a picture of the inner labels um the badge and just anything that can maybe be used to identify whether a shirt's or fake and i put in twitter guys is this legit or not and within minutes people will message back and be like blah 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 stay well away because the stitching hair isn't correct or blah 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 um i remember with like a lot of the england stuff over the euros last year when it was going crazy like i learned that like, there's something to do with like the stitching on the u on umbro um with like the england shirts and stuff like that 
Um, also, on Facebook, there is an authenticity group, right? I'm going to link it below, right? And you have to be accepted into this group on Facebook. And you basically do the same thing as I just described on Twitter. You take as many pictures as you can. And there are experts out there, people that just know these things just by looking at them, people that own the shirts also, so they can cross-reference in the same way as I said when we was talking about um, cross-referencing the shirts with eBay. And yeah, that is probably the best way that I've found, especially with older shirts, is to just ask the people within the community because first of all, the people in the community are absolutely bloody amazing. Um, and there are some genuine experts with like crazy amount of knowledge, like better knowledge than I have. And if it wasn't for a lot of those people, I probably would have a shed load of fake shirts in my collection because they just not. I think that's probably about it for fake shirts. Um, I hope I haven't um, forgotten anything. But if I have, feel free to comment below. People that are new to collecting shirts and want to know some more, have a look in the comments and see what people have written underneath. But um, yeah, man, thank you very much for watching the video. Make sure you like, share this with your friends and family so they can like so it can help them to buy you shirts that are legit um and subscribe to the channel anyway look out for the rest of the sh uh, videos in this series where i buy shirts from and uh, the crazy prices of shirts and until next time i've been kit man a man peace